guys. Um, I wanted to hop on here and give an update. Um, it's, I wasn't planning on doing this video until closer to the, sorry, I'm out of breath. I've just been running up and down the stairs. Um, until closer to the end of the school year, but, uh, some stuff has changed and most of it in a good way, but some stuff has changed and I just kind of wanted to hop on here and give an update. So, um, I'm going to go over just kind of how homeschooling is going. I've also received several messages, some comments, um, asking about different things. So I thought I'd hop on here to give an update, um, for anyone who's new, um, and hasn't seen my channel before. I am a homeschooling mom of two boys. I have a four year old who I'm not really doing anything formal with at all. Um, and then I have a just turned nine year old. He turned nine last week and he's technically third grade. Um, he has ADHD, both like combined type. He has sensory issues. Um, he has dyslexia, dyscalculia, dysgraphia, auditory processing, slow processing, and like some other things. So anyway, he just has a hard time with school period. Um, he loves math, science and history, and he does pretty well with those. Everything else he is, um, behind grade level. So for reading, he is catching up. He is doing a lot better with reading. He's now, I'd say at like a second grade-ish level. Um, but math, he is still definitely like first grade, maybe middle of first grade in some things. He's really just still struggles a lot with math. Um, and writing, he's probably like first grade level with writing and spelling. So, um, that said, his reading has really, really taken off. He still definitely reads behind grade level, like I said, but he's just doing so much better. The things we use, um, you can watch my previous videos because we are still using a lot of the same stuff, but the things we use for language arts are the good and the beautiful. We're on level one. We are still very slowly working through that. We are over halfway through. Um, we actually started at the end of last year, but we're over halfway through and he's just, it's been the best language arts curriculum that we have used. Um, and yeah, so we're just keeping on with that and he, uh, he's just doing well and he doesn't fight that one. So we also are supplementing just with a lot of extra reading. We do hands-on activities too. And, um, you know, like spelling games and stuff like that. Um, uh, also for math, we have changed a little bit. We are still using good, the good and the beautiful. We were using the good and the beautiful level one starting this fall. We've used it, um, up to now. And <sighs> I will say, I stand by my statement previously that so far this is our favorite math curriculum. I do think that um, it's still probably one of his favorite, if I can say anything's a favorite, because he hates math, period, like all, even the good and the beautiful, like all math programs he's hated. Um, math, we've done, just for record, we have done Math UC, um, we have done Right Start Math, we have done... I'm totally blanking horizons, math, math lessons for a living education. And now we're on the good and the beautiful. So we have kind of tampered around with most, most math curriculums or types of math curriculum. And I piece a lot of stuff together. Um, even, so the good and the beautiful, I liked the repetition. I liked the, the uh, daily dose or whatever they call it at the beginning. That was the one part of the day. Like he never fussed about that. He just did it. He felt like confident about it. Um, and I, and I liked that we were really doing pretty well until it started the second half. As you get into the second half, it starts kind of like expecting you to have memorized certain math facts. Um, and we were doing like addition of doubles and, you know, things like that. And it was kind of moving on, expecting you to have memorized that or gotten it down pretty well. And because of his dyscalculia or dyscalculia or however you say it, he, um, really struggles and just his memory in general is not good. And so this is kind of always where we get hung up. Once it was kind of building upon that, like the mastery of it, he just hadn't mastered it. Um, he cannot he understands the process. He knows how to add. He, you can read him a word problem and he kind of knows what he needs to do, but he cannot do it mentally at all. Like his mental math skills are 
like almost zero. Like it just, it, it's a problem. So, and we have tried flashcards. We have tried, you know, tons of board games. We have tried everything. And I think it's going to be like with reading where it felt that way with reading for a really long time. Like we were still practicing the word the, like literally the word the or the word and or at or whatever, like these small words, he could not remember them. He would, you know, try to read it, say it wrong. I'd say it's the word the and he, you know, oh, okay, the. And then literally three sentences down, he's reading the word again and he can't remember it for years. Um, So I think it's just one of those things with him. And now he can read that stuff just fine. Like it did eventually click. He um, did finally re- like recognize and remember words. Like it just took a long time. And I'm really hoping that math is going to be that way. That um, it just eventually clicks and he starts remembering things. He has started memorizing some math facts like the addition um, facts to 10. Like th- that um, t- 2 and 8 make 10 and 7 and 3 make 10. But um, there are days even then where he's his sensory stuff is worked up and his emotions are crazy or he's very distracted and he can't remember those for a minute. So he's getting there. Um, he's grown. He's capable of like moving on in other areas that don't require all that mem- memorization, you know, like measuring um, money and time. He's doing good. He's great at time. Um, he still struggles some with money because it's skip counting and addition and stuff and he skip counting. That's another thing. Like there's a, just so much memorization and math, um, that is required to really build and move on. Um, and even skip counting or even counting period, you know, with the, this, this, this calcula part, it's, it's like dyslexia for him and, and the aspect that he flips numbers a lot and he reads numbers wrong. Like the, for example, he'll read the number 21 as 12 and the number 12 is 21 and things like that. So, um, struggles a lot with place value, even though we've been working on it for three or four years or whatever. So, um, yeah, four years. So anyway, um, that said, so we like the good and the beautiful. The thing I was struggling with from a teaching aspect was, and sorry if I'm talking super fast, I also have ADD and I tend to talk super fast and I'm trying to slow it down. Um, as far as the good and the beautiful, the parts I didn't like as a teacher were um, the, while it is mostly open and go, it's very wordy, um, especially as you kind of get further into it. And there it's story-based. It's kind of Charlotte Mason inspired. And there's a lot of, you know, reading from the parent's perspective. I don't expect him to read it. Um, but he was just tuning it out like the whole purpose of that is to help math make sense, but he doesn't um, process auditorily well. So the reading aspect of it was kind of pointless and it was just taking a lot of time. He wasn't really getting any of it. And then I would just have to summarize the lesson anyway. So we started just skipping that part. Um, And I basically would kind of skim through it, read what I was going to be teaching and then just, you know, like do that part. And It was kind of like once we got to the part where he was having trouble even, you know, doing like the double addition and stuff like that, um, it was kind of feeling a little like maybe we need to try something different. I didn't plan on switching him to anything else or trying anything else. I was just going to take it slow and steady and just kind of let him move on with certain things and work like kind of skip through the lessons depending on what they were on um, so that he could move on and not get bored with certain things. But what happened was I picked up a new math curriculum for my four-year-old, which I had never intended to do a math curriculum with him, okay? But, and I'm not really going through school with him, but he is the opposite, like total opposite of my oldest. He is like adding, he totally understands all numbers like he's writing he's starting to read he can read the beginner bob books like this is without like pretty much any instruction um we just would do letter puzzles and things and i'd say the sounds as we were doing them and of course he listens to his older brother and there's been a lot of reading instruction with his older brother over the years so he has been privy to that um and he's spelling and reading stuff so and he loves it he begs for more Um, so I went curriculum shopping looking for 
history for my oldest. Um, and I'll explain that in a minute as well. Um, and while I was there, I was l just glancing at different math curriculums, trying to see if maybe there was something kind of fun, more hands-on that I could look at for my uh, younger one. And I w was looking at the Singapore. I've heard so many good things about Singapore. We actually pr tried their the early bird, I think it was, briefly the summer before kindergarten with my oldest. And he did fine. But anyway, moving on from that, we just barely like looked at it and did a little bit with it. But the, um, they have a new program called Dimensions, and let me grab it. I have it behind me somewhere. Okay. And I picked it up. There it is. I picked it up for my preschooler, and I picked up the level, what's going to show it backward, pre-K, B. I also have pre-K, A, but I, he's way past that, so I don't even know why I grabbed that. And then the kindergarten. And really, going through it, he's at the kindergarten level. But I wanted to make sure all our bases were covered. This I just do for fun with him. Um, I'll kind of flip through and show you a little bit. Super basic. I love it. Just very simple illustrations. Very simple um, instructions. Super short lessons. I love it. It's like 10 minutes tops. And with my youngest... He'll do like eight lessons in a row because they're so easy. Um, the pre-K level is just so easy. I think probably for most kids, color, shape sorting, that kind of stuff. Um, but it just makes him feel good and it's kind of busy work, but he loves it. So we've been doing that. He loved it so much. I went ahead and checked out the first grade level. And this is the second half of first grade. There's a 1A, which I have in the schoolroom, and we're actually going through that. So that's what we are doing right now. This is... Just a flip and very simple, colorful um, instructions, not very wordy, not a lot of, uh, you know, equations in there. It's really big on teaching, super concrete, simple to follow, easy steps, um, and then getting slightly more abstract and building on that. And that was a big deal to me. I absolutely love the way it is designed as far as the teacher goes. It is so open and go, so short, so easy to follow. Um, I don't know how upper grades are. I'm sure it gets more difficult. They do have a teacher ma teacher's manual, which I do have, but really up at these levels, it's not like super necessary. I don't think there's some stuff in the first grade. Well, and even the kindergarten one that I thought Okay, that's good to know, like different games you can do, or if you were teaching more than one student at a time or a class type setting, that would be really beneficial. Um, so anyway, we have gotten this, and we've been trying it. This is the end of our second week with my oldest, and I love it. Um, I won't say he loves it, but he doesn't like it any less than the good and the beautiful. I would say um, it's up there as far as like if he had to pick a math it's up there with that one um so and I like it I just it's so open and go it's so simple and it's really cost effective it's very in inexpensive so um I do just add our manipulatives to it like when it's having him do the addition um I wish I had brought his other book in here oh I did bring it in here I'm just kidding I didn't even realize it so anyway um let me just show you so it'll have a lesson, and um, let me see. Okay, like this is something he did today. So it had a lesson on just the addition facts up to 10, which he knows these pretty well. And then it has these um, pull, pull, hole to part things, and it has it break them down. Um, and then the lessons, that's it. It's just like a pa two pages, I think maybe three on some of them. But they're really, it has a little story problem at the beginning. I know I'm like all over the place, guys. When it introduces it, it always shows it with pictures, and it, then it has you tell the kids a story, then it has the kids tell you their own story about whatever the picture is, um, turn it into math equations. So there's 10 frogs, six frogs are on the lily pad, and four are on the log, you know, and then they have to come up with one like, oh, um, there are, you know, five, I can't see this because it's upside down, there are four frogs eating flies. I'm just kidding. There's five frogs, five frogs eating flies. And there are four frogs or five frogs not eating flies. And there's 10 frogs all together. So things like that. He loves coming up with a little story. I didn't think he'd care, but he loves it. And then the worksheet, you can just 
they're perforated so they come out really easy and they're just um, one page front and back and the worksheet will start off um, going over what the lesson is on and the whole first page is pretty much that way and it covers it in different ways domino uh, ten frame cards hold apart uh, like kind of number searches, not word searches, but like number searches. And then it do, the second half is like review. So it'll have stuff from previous lessons in it. So um, that's what we've been doing for the last two weeks. I love it. He doesn't really care. <laughs> so I um, plan on just because I'm enjoying it so much and it's so easy. I plan on doing it most days and then um, like once or twice a week trying to move with the good and the beautiful and making sure we're doing like the games and stuff too because I do like that part of it. So I'm not getting rid of the good and the beautiful and we also may end up using that for my youngest So because um, I do really like it as well. Um, it's just a lot of reading. But um, so that's what we're doing for math and that is the biggest change and that's just a recent change and I will definitely keep everyone posted on that. Um, this is probably going to be split into two videos and I'll make this part one because I'm going to run out of room on my, uh, card in a second. But, um, I do want to show in the second part of the video, I'll show more about his reading because in our, our language arts, because there is some updating there. Um, but also just as a side note, we have been going through this as well. We have been trying to do more stuff for his, um, emotional regulation and all that kind of stuff, brain and body integration. Um, school, kind of during our school time or to start our day off. And this is just a neat little book I found and we're liking it so far. Um, it just, it's very short, like little things, very simple, not too much reading and just easy to kind of do stuff in every day. And it's just supposed to kind of help kind of calm them and make them aware of their emotions and their feelings and um, that kind of thing. And he's really enjoying it. He's gotten really into yoga and very interested in yoga and all things yoga, which I have no experience with it. Um, but I think he got it from a friend of his. So we picked up some yoga, like a kid's yoga card thing. And you go through and it shows you different yoga poses and you do one a day. It tells you why, what the pose is supposed to be helpful for and how to do it. And he also has been watching something called, I think it's Cosmic Kids. Pretty sure it's Cosmic Kids um, on Amazon. And uh, he does that in the morning and then again in the, in the afternoon after his school is done. And he's really enjoying that. So I'm trying to get a little more into it. I'm looking into like maybe some like um, parent-child yoga class in the area that we could do together. I think it could be really cool. So um those are kind of the updates with his math and that kind of thing. I will um, also be doing an update more on specifically some of his reading and language arts and spelling because we have added a new writing and spelling curriculum and I want to share that with you guys too um, because that has been going really well. Um, so yeah, I hope that this was helpful for those of you who are out there like teaching kids who have like the dyscalculia and stuff. It's, uh, you're not alone and it can be really challenging and frustrating for both you and your kids. So um, I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.